That's really nice. Yeah, really nice. I like that. I don't really know. Well, that's that's fine also. Live in mansions. All right. I don't see anyone talking about saving some money if money was no option. Come on now. Oh, I like that. Pay in full MIT. Yes, yes. Pay in full MIT, you know. So I want to thank you all. Thank uh, Morris and Oasis and everybody. And Keith Stokes, is a, he's a, a great person. I didn't even know he was going to be, be on before me, but um, he has some good information about um, African history and American history um, in Rhode Island. And, you know, if, if, if we think about where America is today, it is because of us and because of our heritage and because of our, our of us as what we have done for America in order for it to be so wealthy and a huge nation, it was, it was built on the back of African people. So, um, you know, I just put that out there. So you all need to have a financial plan. Uh, I don't care how old you are, um, or where you are. If you have a plan, you need to look at it every year as me and my wife are sitting down with our financial person on Friday. And um, you should have a plan for yourself for the future. So well, I, I grew up in Queens, New York, um, came to Rhode Island in 1994 for um, business school. And I did not have a plan to go to college. I had a plan to make money and go in the army after college. And then before I started to, you know, get closer to my 12th grade in school, my my cousin said, I think you should go to college and start taking some pre-college courses. So um, that's how I decided to, to go to college. I wasn't on that track, but I also worked um, also during college uh, full time. So, you know, um, having a financial plan is going to help you all out, um, you know, now and in the future. And the biggest three things is to have vision. And that's why I asked that question of money was no object. What would you do, be doing in five years? Because when you have a vision like that, then you can start planning and back into where you want to be, right? And so you have to think about the income. I know um, you all are, are, are youth and you're thinking about going to college or not going to college or doing something after high school. But just think about how much college courses. Anybody know what the average year, yearly college course is by any chance? I know it's not 5000 but does anybody know what that might be the average college course or what are, what are you hearing might be the, the course of a year of tuition in college? Feel free to pop it in the chat or you could quickly unmute yourself. 50000 Ah, oh, that's probably 30 k all right? And so if you just take that number of 50000 times that by four, that's $200,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. Mm. I, I, it, you know, when I was going to college, I think it was like ten. And so, if you think about that, you could buy a house for two hundred thousand dollars, right? And so, the reason why uh, Morris uh, likes to bring me in and talk about uh, this information because you have to be realistic about what you want and how you're going to get it, but then also have a plan for that. So. You won't walk away from a college education with two hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt when you're starting off and working um, in in your in your career, and now you can't obtain certain things because you have a lot of debt. So, hopefully, um, you all I think about scholarship funds. If you go to college, listen, I I, I wrote um, the president of the United States asked for scholarship fund. A scholarship, even though he wrote me back at the time. Now, the average family has sixteen thousand dollars of credit card debt. Just to give you an idea, so if you said to yourself, "I'm gonna take out student loan debt," or my parents are gonna take out student loan debt of two hundred thousand, on top of that, there will be more debt, kind of like maybe credit card debt and maybe mortgage. So, we want you to think realistically about how are you gonna fund that college education, or how are you gonna fund your travel. Right? Or how are you going to fund something else? Now, this is on average that, um, you know, uh, people leave uh, college with $27,000 in debt. Um, that was from the Institute for College Access and Progress, and it probably has changed over the, the last year, I bet you. Um, but just think about that. The more 
the more burden you have after you leave college, the bigger burden you're gonna have when you start working in your career or in, and you leave. So, but there's many ways nowadays that you can actually go to school and might not have a lot of debt. I know there's a huge push um, to get people to go through community colleges first, to get two years of credit at a lower price and then transfer um, to colleges. There's also a big push of trying to help people to go into the trades like um, construction or engineering where um, you might not have, um, you don't need a lot of um, college credits, but it's you working with your um, your brain and, and your hands to, to get in uh, good education. And I'm gonna be honest with you, some of the trades, they pay more than, um, you know, office office positions. So like, I, I know, um, you know, Department of Transportation, they have laborers and they make some good money. There's electricians and plumbers and, and a lot of, those positions are in high demand now and a lot and we should be also talking about that also so the average graduate <laughs> uh with a college salary is like forty one thousand dollars that's to give you an idea right that's the average uh salary once you graduate um depending on your industry depending on your field and your degree that changes but but that's the average right and so if you think about we said it takes $200,000 maybe for a four-year degree, it's probably, if you take all of the money that you make from your job after, it's probably going to take you six years or more to pay off that debt if you didn't use that money for anything else. But as we know, that's not, not the case for everyone. So this is what you all should have. And I know there's many apps like Mint and you know uh, other apps that you can use that could keep track of your, your funds, but you should have a, a roadmap and a budget for where you want to be, right? And you keep track of it. It could keep track of what you're doing to tell you, you know, when you're when you're off, when you're uh, when you're on the right track, and here's some goals. And it would just help you make better decisions for yourself, right? And so a lot of people are using technology to help them with with budgeting and and their finances. So. This is a sample budget, if you all haven't seen it or seen a budget like this already, right? Um, does anybody do budgeting now for themselves? If you do, just put, put yes in the chat section. Does anybody do budgeting currently right now for themselves? For those of you that are heading to college, you should be budgeting right now. You know, yeah. You're right. in high school. Yeah. This will help you out. It's a good it's a, time. It's a good good. Good time to do it. Somebody put yes. All right, Gofar, thank you. This is a good time to do it because once you have, I mean, numbers tell the story. That's why you tell people. So num numbers tell the story. And what you what you keep track of with data will help you to um, make, make the decisions that you need to make. Like, for instance, you see here, this is a sample budget for someone where they bring in $2,500 a month, and then this is kind of like their expenses, their food, their books, their clothes, their rent, electric, and gas, and they have $1,200 remaining. Now, some people might say um, you might um, want to make sure that you use all of the $1,200 and budget it out. So, for instance, you could budget out for savings, which is not in here. You could um, budget for retirement. You, your budget maybe for even put money away for when you get out of school to start paying your student loan. So there's a number of things that that you can do. But if you start now, it's going to help you out um, in the long run. All right. And you will be able to make the right decisions about certain stuff. The other thing that's not in here is an emergency fund. In your in your your budget, you should have an emergency fund. And you know what? I'm just going to write that in there. Right emergency even though i talked about it fun <laughs> <laughs> right you should you should have these certain things because it's going to help you out to be better at what you do going forward all right let's go here and go to the next one right so i talked about mint there we go so mint.com um is a great place where you can actually um start budgeting and it can help you to track your spending. Um, it can help you to track your savings and investments. And it's a helpful tool. So if you don't want to do it by hand or do a, an Excel spreadsheet, 
why not get some help from software, right? So that's a that's a helpful to, tool. Also, does anybody have a check in the savings account already that you that you save money or you use it for to pay bills or anything, all right? Somebody says I do, all right, awesome, right? So it is it is good to have both of these. So you know, but I know that there's a there's there's a new things about cash apps and Venmo and things like that that <laughs> you know. So uh, how can I say it? Cash app and Venmo is not a checking account. It's just a way to move money from one place to another, from people to people. It's not a, it's not a checking account. Now you have a debit card with your cash app or your Venmo, but it's not a checking account. So you all want to have accounts that has your name on it. And then things where you can have money coming in and money coming out because say for instance, you decide to go get an apartment, buy a house. They're not going to look at your cash app. They're going to ask you, what do you have for a bank statement? So you want to have um, some credible bank statements there. Um, and you want to use the accounts. A checking account is used for deposits and debits. Your savers account is used to save money, all right? Um, and then you also should have an emergency account just in case. And people are saying, why just in case? Just in case something happens that you didn't plan for to happen. You have a car? Anybody have a car? Anybody... And they pay for it themselves. Anybody have a car that they own? Not yet. No, Not yet. yet. All right. <laughs> you got a bike that you own, <laughs> right? I didn't have a bike. <laughs> yeah, right. You're right. You got it. That bike needs some tires. It needs some air. It needs to be fixed. It needs some grease. And so, when when you have things, you have to fix them. And so, just like a vehicle, your car could get a flat, right? Your car could break down. You need an oil change. You need maintenance. And so. You have an emergency fund when something catastrophic happens, it can help you out. All right. And so that's why it's important to have it. So let's talk about credit. Credit is the ability to borrow money, sometimes called a loan. And it's a promise that you said you, you took money, you got to pay it back. All right. And having good credit makes it easier for you to borrow in the future. All right. So that's what that's what credit is. And so what I want to say, people, you, you, you all about to go into the real world in the future. So credit is important, but credit should not run your life. I'm going to say that again. Credit is important, but credit should not run your life. All right. And so um, you should be able to, to look at credit as a way to effectively to obtain um, housing, employment, insurance, but it should not be the, the end all, right? You should really be looking at your income and your savings to operate versus using credit um, for many things. All right. So they're talking about credit. There's three credit bureaus called Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Um, they report, mostly all the creditors report to one of these uh, major credit reporting agencies, and they come up with a score called a FICO score, um, Fair Isaac score was developed by a man named Fair Isaac many years ago. And they use his kind of like analysis to come up with a score to say how good or bad a credit risk you are. So usually the, the credit, um, excuse me, let me go back. Usually the credit scores go from 300 to 850. But then there's all this, this new thing called Vantage score that they're using now. And it goes from 501 to 990. So the better you use your credit, the better your score will be closer to 850. The If you don't use your credit that well, the lower your score will be. Um, and then also, this Vanish credit score is really used a lot of times for like uh, mortgages or more credit type risk type products. All right. So you can get a free credit report. All right. So um, you all might not have any credit, but. Um, you can share it. if you do. You would get a free credit report for yourself through the free annual credit report. Um, if you know any adults that haven't looked at their credit um, in a while, you probably want to tell them to get a free credit report. Um, especially now, there's been a lot of fraud going on um, with the with fraud happening. 
And so um, here's my tips. Only borrow what you can pay back. Only use credit cards if you can pay them back within 30 to 90 days. As I said before, don't let credit make decisions for your purchases and do not co-sign for anyone. I'm going to say that again. Do not co-sign. I, I probably should just like, you know, circle that one right there. Do not co-sign for anyone unless you want to take the responsibility for the credit. That's what I tell people. Mm. Unless you want to be responsible for that credit. Co-signing co means that you, the person couldn't really get uh, get credit, so they asked you to be the co-signer to say if they don't pay, you will pay. So if they don't pay the credit, then you will pay the credit. Bam. And I'm done. I got seven minutes left. What questions do you all have? Yes. <laughs> what questions does everybody have for me? Well, let, let them ask their question first. I have one or two, you know, so. Yes. Go ahead. Go. What questions do you all have? Yeah. Maybe this will help them, you know. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Why is it that it's only America that runs on credit? Um, there's other places um that run run on credit. Um, and be honest with you, a lot of the, the a lot of the con a lot of countries in the world run on credit. Just to give you an example, when we print money in America, mm -hmm. it is based on us saying that if something happens to our economy, we'll back it up and make sure that that money is is valued. You know, so many countries are backing their financial system based on their goodwill to pay pay back of what they said they're gonna borrow or issue money into the into the um to the economy. So other countries have credit scores? Do countries um they might not have like a FICO score, but they do have a credit rating. So each country will have a credit rating based on how the economy is doing. Okay. Good question. Anyone else have a question for me? Um, what is like a good credit score to like aspire to have? I guess like what is like the average credit score? Usually, the average credit score is seven fifty. The bet you a lot of people that could usually get the lowest rates and stuff usually have like credit scores of eight eight hundred. But what I tell people, um. You know, you all are, are younger, so you know, usually older adults. I tell, I tell because if they're struggling with that credit score, I always tell them your credit score is your past history, not your future history. So you can always make your score better. You can always make your score better. All right, Morris, what questions you have? For me? Yeah, uh, the question I have is: It okay for the youth to have catch up and have a saving account instead of? I mean, I know they don't need a check-in right now, but we, for a start. Will it be nice for them to have catch up or zero and saving account in order for them to move their money around and to pay bills? Um, yeah, if they, I, I know the cash cash app and Venmo stuff has like a, a a debit card feature. So I've seen a lot of um, people where uh, the parent puts money on on a cash app, so they use yeah. the debit card. Mm -hmm. Um, or if they if you're going to a, a place and you want to, you know, somebody pays for something then you give them the money through your cash app, that's fine also, you know, mm. um, but you definitely should have, uh, right now you should have a savings account. So at least that you're saving money, um, and putting that into a reputable institution because at a bank up to 250,000, your money is, is, uh, secured. Meaning that is is backed up by the government. So if something happens to that bank and they lose your money up to two hundred fifty thousand, you'll get your money back. The cash app, I don't know if it's backed up by a bank. So I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I think the banks back up your uh cash app. Some banks has it. Yep. It's tied into your accounts. That's you know, right. It's been very helpful. Once you do the cash app. It comes out of your account right away, you know. That's right. Uh, I think that's that that's one of the things that has been happening. The other thing I've been advising people, I say, being an immigrant, I keep saying, uh, credit is your life in America. Mm. You, know, if you mess it up, don't blame anybody. So <laughs> you 
<laughs> you need to take a look at yourself. What are you doing and that you are doing it wrong? So young, old, indifferent, I don't think they know that. You know, if they want you to be solid, good, you got to maintain a good credit. Yes. In yes. form or shape. You know, so I say this all the time, both young, old, indifferent, you know, this is not catch and carry economy. You know, they look at everything. Yeah. yeah. And you said it all, and I agree, you know, um, FICO, all this kind of thing are very, very important. And this information we are giving you guys today, please share with your parents, share with your brother, or share with your brother, your sister in college. You know, you can give them the information. If they have questions, they can call. You know, if they want this seminar, we can make an arrangement for them to have it. Most especially the young professionals. I'm still going to go there, you know, inviting them, you know, to have a seminar for the young professionals, meaning people out of college <laughs> that are in a, in a world, you know, don't know how their credit is affecting their life, you know. So I just want to put that, you know, as part of the thing. So <laughs> thank I'll let you, thank you. young ones uh, ask another question. There's Sylvia that wants her to ask a question. Go ahead, Sylvia. And uh, Olu, you want to ask a question? You got your hand up? Yeah. I just want, there's, some, there's some credit, like there's free credit. It's called team banking. Is that is that safe or it's not? What's it called? It's like team banking. I mean, team, I mean, team banking. Like it's like a free card that any, like any age can use it. I would so, say, know, yeah, as long as it, it says that it's um, uh, guaranteed by the FDIC, if you see that on their website, then that means that it's a reputable um, agency to use. So the Federal Deposit uh, Insurance Company is the federal agency that um, regulates the banking. So if you see that anyway, FDIC, that means that the money's guaranteed and they oversee that, that banking institution. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So your time is up, right? I have one more question. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Um, how would you recommend, like, someone just getting into, like, getting a credit card and stuff, how would you recommend that they build up credit for themselves? So, one, I would say you go to annualcreditreport.com and see what's on there and see if nothing's on there, period, and kind of see what your score but if you're looking to build up your credit, you can start off with um, taking out, say, for instance, a, we call it like a, a small credit card, maybe like $100, $200, $300, or there's credit cards that what we call is, um, uh, I forgot, on demand, I call it on demand, I don't know what's coming to my head, but it's not called that, but you put up maybe $100 and then they'll give you a credit card for $100, all right? So collateralize um, credit cards, that's how you can build up build up credit also very quickly any, thank you you're welcome any other questions before we uh wrap it up for today thank you thank you all feel free i put my contact information in the chat i'll also put the link to the powerpoint in the chat feel free to get that information and um you know thank you morris and thank you all for listening and Go out and do great things. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. I really appreciate it. <laughs> before you leave, we uh, you're going to make me a host before. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I already made you host, man. I'm good oh, with you. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all it. All right. You all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Have a nice one. All right. Bye-bye.